Hello and welcome back to Space Entities. In today's video, I'm once again taking a look at one of your designs that you recommended me in the comment section of one of my videos or on Mod.io. And for today, we are looking at a flying submarine. This one is called the Subspace Boat Spider, which is this lovely thing that I'm standing on. So this is a large block submarine that features a small amount of firepower, as well as everything you need to survive in survival mode. There will also be a link to the skybox I'm currently using, because it is a very nice one. It's a lovely foresty area that goes across to a beach and then a vast ocean. Of course, you can't actually visit that, it's just in the background, but I thought it would suit this ship, means it can't actually go with the water mod. Pressing F10 and finding this in the spawn menu, the subspace boat Spider is 1,556 large blocks, using one hell of a lot of the DLC packs. We've got a little bit of information about it on the Steam Workshop page, where it says not underwater, but a subspace boat named Spider with all combat functions. So we'll give this thing a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, but we could look around the outside, then we'll have a tour of the interior, and the interior is very impressive with just how much stuff has been crammed into the ship, then we'll fly around for a bit and maybe slam it into an asteroid. So front and centre, what we got is a camera to help view outside, and of course to aim the rocket launches right below it. Those rocket launches are the only manual firepower we've got, the only other type of gun on here we've got is our artillery turret on top, which is going to be for some automated firepower. we also got a lovely catwalk going along there so we can repair that turret if we need to, and of course to get in and out of this ship via the doorway right behind it. Coming around onto the side, this is all we can see so we can clearly see our catwalk going all the way along, then onto this section we've got some great use of our transparent LCD screen, then a few more cameras out to see on the left and right. Moving up to this, we've got some rotors and pistons acting as our periscope so we can see all the way around this and get a good view of what's going on. And then there's an antenna to make sure we can always find this. Just dropping down and continuing all the way along, there's some more catwalks, there's another doorway to get in, and at the very back we can see some hydrogen thrusters to move this thing around. And this is what's going to push us around, four of them, with another camera just above them. Moving all the way up and looking down, there's some more hydrogen thrusters to help push us down, there's a connector to dock this thing up, and of course to recharge it with ammunition and hydrogen. There's all of our catwalks, there's our doorway to get in, there's our periscope and other catwalks, there's the artillery turret, and there's where I'm standing. Dropping down and coming underneath, this is what we get. Just moving along the main body, we can't really see too much, because most of it is on the inside. And there are the thrusters at the back. And there we go, that's a very brief look around the outside of the subspace boat spider, and it does what it says on the tin, it looks like a submarine, and it gets even better when we're on the inside and you see what's crammed into it. But grabbing hold of my character, we can now walk past our artillery turret, I had to remember what this was this time, not an assault cannon, an artillery. We can press this, open up the doorway, and this is the first section of the inside. Of course we've got the same doorway on the opposite which will take us to the back of the ship. There we go, then just closing it up, we've got ourselves a locker, to prepare ourselves to go outside. Now this could go in water and if this game was set up say like Barrow Trauma, you can then have all your auction bottles, your diving suit in this locker, you can prepare yourself and then go outside, to get mauled to death by some sea creatures. Anyway, dropping down this ladder, we can now get into the main section, which is how we're going to drive this thing around and control all the different stuff around this ship. But first of all, just backing into a corner, this is what we get. Some chairs and lockers around the room, we can see some conveyors going across the ceiling, a sound block and air vent, and some more doorways go throughout the ship. So coming around onto this side, we can see a projector table projecting the current seat. We have some more seats around the room, we'll come back to that a bit later. And we do have some LCD screens telling us some important information. What we'll do is come around over to this part, open up this doorway. We've got still some batteries all the way around the room, so we can manually control them if we need to. Just looking up, there's a gyroscope. Then opening up this doorway, we then come into this little section, which is like your crew quarters. It's got our beds on this side, our kitchen table there. Then we can see some more conveyors just going across the room with another air vent. Going further to the front of the ship, we've got ourselves an auto tanker on this side we can use to go out and find all patches if we need to. And then there at the front are our rocket launches where we can manually access this one, where we can see how it's been connected up to the rest of the ship. Just looking up, there are some hydrogen thrusters, there's another air vent. And then there is a toilet just in case you need it. Anyway, coming back down and towards the back of the ship, past our control room, into this doorway. We've got our survival kit to respawn on and to heal yourself. Another chair which we can hop in here for the moment. This is going to be to control our antenna and ore detector. And just coming out of that, there's another locker. Opening up this doorway, coming further back, some more drone scoops, our gravity generator on and off. There's our little lab table, then just looking around the room here. There we are. Then opening up this one, 
And over to this section we've got our cargo containers, got our hydrogen tanks, and of course our O2 H2 generators in our ceiling. Then opening up this one, here's a hydrogen engine just in case we need it where we can toggle it on and off. There we are, and then just behind us some more cargo containers. Then opening up this one, finally we're now at the back of the ship. We've got ourselves our shelves, and around here we've got our hydrogen thrusters. So you could use this to cook your friends, just have them stand here and then start moving left. They'll get blasted by these. Looking around, we can see how our other hydrogen thrusters have been set up. We can easily repair these if they ever took damage. But now we can come back towards the front room, or the middle room in fact, and control the ship. So around and over to here, we've got ourselves a button panel. This one is for our red alert, where we press that and all the lights will turn red around the ship. Pressing this one would then be to close all the doors and you can see all of them closing at the same time there. That's very nice. This one's going to be for our sandbox to turn it on off for an alarm sound. And this one's going to be for our transparent LCD screens outside the ship. Should be for these ones over here to turn them on and off. Coming away from that and coming into this seat, we've got some manual control for our artillery turret on the side there. Manual control for our rocket launchers at the front. Some controls for our gyroscopes. Number five is for our camera. Number six is for our hydrogen engine. Number seven is for our battery to auto recharge. Number eight is for our air vents. And then number nine is for our hydrogen thrusters. Coming out of that and finally into this, this is our main control seat. Where in first person view, this is all we can see. Our hydrogen power usage, our meters per second, and then if anything is locked onto. So coming to third person view, whoop, that's the wrong button. There we are, pressing number one, this is going to be for our periscope on top. And number two, three and four, it's also going to be for controls to move it up and down and left and right. So there we are, we can move it all the way up, then we can move it left, and then move it right. Number 5, 6, 7 and 8 is going to be for the rest of the cameras around the ship. So there is the front, left, right and then behind us. And then number 9 for manual control of our rocket launches and the front there, just to fire them both together. And there we go. So now we're just going to test fly this and after we'll fly into an asteroid. So moving forwards, this is what we get. We are quite a slow ship. So in combat, we will be heavily relying on our artillery turret to take out the pesky drones or any kind of fast flying ships. Coming to a stop, that is what we get. It is about the same. They're moving left, moving right, moving down, and then moving up with slow all the way around this. Then for drone script controls, this is what we get. So we do have some control of this, but it is a very, very heavy ship, and it's generally what you expect when you drive a submarine through water. But now what I can do to finish off this submarine is of course slam it into an asteroid, and that'll be it. And here we are, the submarine is now approaching the asteroid at maximum speed. Look at this thing go. And it should slam straight into the middle of it. Here we go. Three, two, one. And straight into the middle. It looks like the entire front got absolutely obliterated. So I'll grab hold of my character. Come out of the control seat. We'll move towards the front. See what's remaining. And surprisingly, quite a lot. So we still got our crew quarters. We still got our battery section. And we can still drive this thing around. So we are perfectly salvageable. And if you wanted to, you could have it as a base just sticking out the asteroid. But anyway, that is it for the Subspace Boat Spider. It's a lovely little submarine if you do wish to download it and play around with it in your world. It could always be refitted to work with a water mod if you wanted to. But yes, there'll be a link to it in the description below, as well as the skybox I'm currently using. And I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye bye.